We're going to shoot a quick video here, um, probably longer than can be shown on uh, Twitter, but not too long, to show you what is new with networking and the Wikipedia app. So here I am on App Launcher. Um, to start with, we're offline because um, nothing is connected to the internet at this point. So we're going to launch Wikipedia for the first time. So here we are, we got this cool little Wikipedia icon. And if we pay attention down here to the status bar, it's busy trying to get online. Okay, so it has just changed status to online. And so we have several options in the menu bar. Our language is currently set to English. Um, and we've got our search bar and our table of contents showing. So I'm going to search for something. Ah, now bef before I actually search for something, I'm going to change the status bar to this application specific mode. And I'm going to search up here for, say, Canada. Okay. And when I hit search, you can see down here on the status bar, look at this. Now we have this thing giving us a percentage, so we can see exactly where we are. And of course, while it's downloading, you know, we can we can pop open these menus. And we can see that the download is still happening in the background. We can resize this panel. You can see that 57%, 63%. So this is pretty cool because it really gives us, you know, uh, a feel for where we are. It was, it was kind of a shot in the dark before when, when this was just saying downloading. Um, so we got the, the main article and we got the table of contents. So we can scroll through our table of contents here. We can also make this wider so we can see the full text of the table of contents. We can also collapse the table of contents like this. And you can see that in this main article now, um, some text is bold. So this is uh, actually a different color. This is black and this, this text here is gray. And of course, the big thing here is that we have links. So everything that's originally a link in, um, in the original article is now shown in this red reverse text. So lots and lots of links here. Um, so let's go and say we want to click on, uh, say, North America. So we click North America, and it puts the link content up here in the search bar. We can see that it's downloading again. And we can see that the, uh, so the sidebar is, is cleared out. And now we're downloading North America. Now again, this is um, at 2400 baht. <laughs> so 2400 baht is not generally considered fast, um, but it's pretty amazing what you actually can do um, at just 2400 baht. Like look, now, now we can read all about North America and um, s we click on one of these links here if we wanted to switch to the article about the Caribbean, or about the United States, or about Earth. Um, or we can pick something from the table of contents. So maybe I'll click, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe climate here. So now we're searching for North America, and we're getting the climate section. We can see again, it's showing our downloaded percentage. 50, 58, 66. And when it hits 100%, it just goes back to the uh, goes back to this cool little application bar telling us um, telling us stuff. So it's pretty rad, right? We can actually click on these links. And also, um, of course, the link value is not necessarily the same as the link text, just like with real uh, hypertext links. You know, that this might say, you know, temperate climates, but if you click it, it might say, you know, temperate climates area or something. Um, okay, so the next thing I wanted to show is um, I'm going to go to uh, Utilities. And I'm going to open the Moon Phase Utility. And so uh, what's happening here now is that um, the Moon Phase Utility is connecting to a totally different uh, network service, but it's using uh, the internet. So we can click this, and we can set a date and click get, and we can, we can see this actually went out to the internet and returned with the moon phase 
and these numbers and it's filled it in here. And we can also just click on one of these articles back here in the background and lo and behold, you know, this is downloading and look, we've got, we got content back here uh, that came from one internet service and we can bump this ahead like this and we can say, oh look, we, we just got this from another, uh, another uh, internet service, right? And then we can say, well, let's click on Prairie Dog and we're going to download that. And so what's cool here is that, you know, we can actually use multiple internet services at the same time um, that are connecting to two different and unrelated services. Um, okay, so now we're looking at prairie dogs, pretty cool. And we can also, of course, we can go home. We can, we can pop back here. Now this here is saying that we're offline simply because nothing within this application has loaded in the uh, driver. But if I uh, double click on this moon phase utility, we can open the moon phase utility in, in this uh, app. And now of course it says this app is online because the network stack has been loaded in. And again, we can, we can if we do this, we can get the moon phase for this date. And when we go back to the Wikipedia app, uh, it's still online as well, and we can maybe click on Grasslands here, and away we go, downloading a new article about Grassland. Um, so the next kind of cool thing that I'll show is um, we can say View uh, Colors. We get this color picker, and we can click on these things here to change the color of the status bar, which is kind of fun. That's kind of kind of neat, right? I like maybe blue is kind of cool. And now maybe I'll click on uh, the biodiversity of grassland. Nine percent, eighteen percent, twenty-seven percent. There we go, biodiversity of grassland. We can roll through this with our mouse wheel. We can also uh, use the keyboard like this. Hit the home key, go back up to the top, press the space bar to page down. Pretty cool. Um, and so um, next I'm going to show you, uh, we can say load in this splash screen. I'm gonna say load a splash screen. Look, now we got this cool uh, bitmap splash screen of uh, Wikipedia C64 OS edition. I just click anywhere on the screen. We go back to the main article. Now I'll say maybe I'll go to another language, like say Esperanto. I'll click in here and say um, um, Tago. So now we're downloading something in Esperanto. Tago is the word for day. Okay, and so here we have uh, an Esperanto article. And what's also kind of cool is um, the uh, Esperanto uses um, accents like many languages, but um, each language gets its own mapping of uh, basically accented characters to some kind of analog. So. Um, this GX is actually a G with an accent, and this GX is a G with an accent, and this is just the standard way that you um, do this kind of transformation in this language. And we can also click on, say, um, this link here. And so it's put the text up here into the search bar, and it's going to download it. And we're still in this uh, language. We're still in uh, this alternative language here. And so we can, we can scroll through here and pick different articles and links from this language. Now I'm gonna try uh, German, which I tried before and it crashed, but I don't think it's gonna crash this time. So we'll search for Berlin, just because I don't know any German words. So here we get uh, an article downloading here. And of course, German has a different 
transliteration of its accented characters. And because we are requesting something in this language, it's going to use a different dictionary uh, on the back end um, for translating those characters into appropriate um, plain Petsky, plain ASCII characters. Um, so I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that, you know, these three S's in a row might have originally been that kind of double S character. Um, and I don't speak German, so I have absolutely no idea, you know, what might be translated. But my guess is that some, some letter combinations in here, like this AE, might have been a letter with an accent. Um, yeah. Isn't that fancy Dan? Pretty cool, right? So I'll go back to English. Well, maybe I'll search for Berlin in English. The search button. There we go. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's kind of neat, right? This is all live. Um, I've also sorted out the problem with the, uh, with the REU. So um, I'm using my REU and the REU is involved in refreshing the screen. Now it, it is a little bit laggy, obviously, when, uh, you know, everything's a little bit laggy when the download is happening because the download is coming over a user port modem and the user port modem is bit banged and it's, you know, so it's, it's, it's beaten up the CPU a little bit, but um, it works and uh, we're not getting any dropped packets and we're not getting any uh, lost data as we refresh the screen while the data is coming coming down. And um, I think it's, it's pretty amazing. And I hope that you think it's pretty amazing too. So this is kind of a, um, the Wikipedia app is sort of a, a, a preview of I think where we're going to go with a web browser. Web browser is going to going to behave quite a bit like this. Um, now there will be more work to do with a web browser, um, but the Wikipedia app is a pretty good start, and I'm really excited about uh, about it. Um, I think that it is. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Another splash screen again. There we are. All right. Thanks for watching.